Good morning. It's Friday the 13th, August the 13th. I'm not superstitious, but if you are, you can watch this to see if anything horrible happens to me as I walk around the lake today. It is Friday, so it's around the lake day. It's a nice, cool morning, about 12, 13 degrees right now. It's going to be really hot again this weekend. It's supposed to be in the 30s the next two or three days. But uh, right now, you can get that hint of fall in the air. And of course, the days are getting shorter, so the shadows are getting longer as I come out here on Friday mornings to walk around. <clears throat> we'll walk counterclockwise today, I think, around the lake. It's my preferred direction, I think. don't know why. It's not just because I could only walk clockwise for most of the last few months. I've already said how silly I think that is, so I won't say it again. Well, yes, I will. That's silly. That was such a silly thing. But anyway, off we go. What I do yesterday, I worked on my, my short story for the Tangled Stars, which is uh, a portion of it comes out of the novel. Uh, sorry, for the anthology, the kickstarted anthology, Shapers of Worlds Volume 2. Um, a portion of it comes out of the Tangled Stars, the novel. Then it goes on to elaborate on an event that's important to getting the main three characters together. Cooper Douglas, Lisa Gray, and Tybalt, the genetically modified, AI-uplifted, smart aleck cat. <laughs> this is how they all met, this short story. All the rest of the stories have been edited. I'm waiting for authors to get back to me in a few cases, but generally they come back and say those are fine. Steve Sterling, SM Sterling, got back to me yesterday and said my modifications were fine. On his very long story, he very generously provided the longest story in the book um, while accepting my uh, budgeted limit on reprints. I asked for about 5,000 words. I would go as far as 6,000, but I capped it at whatever that would be. So it was $600 for original fiction and $300 for reprints, because reprints were five cents a word and original fiction 10 cents a word. And his is 16,000 words, but he was still willing to do it for the budgeted limit of $300 for a reprint. So that's a pretty good deal for a Steve Sterling story, I think. <laughs> I was very appreciative of that. we can go under the bridge today. <clears throat> when I drove over here yesterday, um, the barriers are gone, so maybe the murals are complete, or at least if they're adding another one, it's not there yet. I can already tell walking east, I will not be able to see the screen very well. Uh, hmm. But somebody just said hello. I'm on 22. Uh, this is an iPhone 11. Although our television, our new television, actually has Android connections. <laughs> and we have a Google at home thing, which we only use to get the temperature. <laughs> Let's say, hey Google, what's the temperature? That's about the only time I ever talked to the thing. It's always listening, of course, which is a little creepy, but... but yeah, this is an iPhone 11 uh, Pro, uh, whatever they call it, the bigger one, if there is a bigger one. I've had so many iPhones, I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Was there a big one and a little one with the iPhone 11? I think so. Okay, down through the tunnel here. Let's see how the murals, if they're all done. <laughs> Morning. Looks like there's still one spot there.
hard to uh, really see them because of the difficulty of getting back from them, but we'll probably come back through the tunnel too since it's open. It's way more interesting than the graffiti that's normally under there, so I think it was a great project. No puddle here, so they must not be watering. Okay, and around we go. We will walk counterclockwise, my preferred direction. There's the lake. Saskatchewan Legislature over there. We'll walk through the legislative. You can see the fountain. It is kind of pretty. The sun behind it. I won't be able to see much walking into the sun, though. On the screen, so if I miss a comment, that could be why. Just Saskatchewan flags on the bridge today, this month. Technically, uh, the civic holiday first Monday in August is called Saskatchewan Day here, so that's probably why there are Saskatchewan flags. If I go here, maybe I can read it. Got some pictures of the old graffiti. Well, they paint it over on a regular basis. Oh, there is a pelican down there. He's not lit up today, so he's hard to see. Oh, are there more of them? Oh, yeah. Several on the rocks over there, a little congregation of them. I don't know what the collective noun for a pelican is. It's a murder of crows, a parliament of owls, I think. I don't know what you call a group of pelicans. A plethora? A plethora of pelicans? <laughs> Poke. The poke of pelicans. Dogs, dogs everywhere. Somebody on Google, look up the collective noun for pelicans. Or I'll have to do it later. Actually, out here where the sun is unimpeded by the trees, it feels warmer. <clears throat> Not surprising. Funny what that nuclear fusion reactor in the sky does to warm things up. Hope I don't run into sprinklers today. That was a pain two or three weeks ago when I had to find my way around them. Through muddy, muddy water. There's a boat over there. I have been on a boat on the lake, but never, you know, when I was rowing myself. We'll go through the flowers because this is when they're at their peak. Pod, pod of pelicans, sort of like whales. Whales come in pods. Hmm, here's the gardens looking lovely this morning. Blue sky, no smoke.
morning. I can smell them. over here just to get a slightly different angle. And of course the statue of Queen Elizabeth on her Saskatchewan I recall, Saskatchewan born bred horse. And she was here to unveil, and I was right over there with my daughter who gave her flowers. I have told that story multiple times now. It was raining. Yeah, everything looks just very nice this morning. Follow my usual path down by the Trafalgar Fountain. Nice lighting on the east side in the morning. Dramatic. I've never seen anybody go in or out of this door. I presume it's possible. <laughs> I've been in the hallway. If I remember right, the uh, legislative library is down this wing. I had a book launch in there once for uh, the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Saskatchewan History. Safe and prosperous future. 100 years of engineering and geoscience achievements in Saskatchewan. My longest book title. <clears throat> Although land surveying in Saskatchewan when laying the groundwork for peace and prosperity, I something like that. That's not quite right. It was also long. There's the Trafalgar fountain ahead of us, which yes, did once indeed stand at Trafalgar Square in London. Came over about 1939. I see there's a comment, I can't read it. <laughs> Very bright walking this direction, as you can imagine. And there's Kirk from Vancouver. As I get into the shade here, I can see that sort of thing. Tennis tournament this weekend. Yes, the uh, tennis court. Well, you can actually see somebody off there in the distance on the tennis court, just through those trees. I think it's called the Lakeshore Tennis Club because everything around here is called the Lakeshore this or that. And of course, from this direction, then you get the fountain and the ledge lined up. I can hear tennis balls being hit even as we speak. Rowing out there. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Fils. Oops, then they landed again. Not heading south just yet. There's some people on whatever you call those stand-up things over here too. Hi, Kevin, is it? Kevin, hi, nice, Kevin. The sidewalk may be closed, I forgot that. Forgot they were working up here. People were coming that direction, they must be coming from somewhere. I guess they went around on the street. Yes, doesn't look terribly welcoming down that way. Don't know what they're doing. This is fine as long as no cars are coming. Perhaps the cars are just on the other side there. They're digging holes. Oh, some sort of cable or something maybe going in. Or a pipe. Upgrades to the irrigation system, the sign says. So that's what that's all about. Morning. I actually saw them working on the other corner of the park back in the spring. I guess it was part of the same project. Over in the south west east corner. Well, less scenic doing it this way, but no choice. There are a lot of geese here. However, at one time there were none. There was a couple of geese. Uh, I should know their names. I wrote a book about them. There's a picture book, or there was a picture book in the Saskatchewan Science Center illustrated by Ward Shell. Queenie and Hiawatha, was it? It would seem to be an odd name, but that's what comes to mind. Anyway, there were this, uh, these pair of geese, and they kind of started the geese invasion of Wascana Center. I don't know, this would have been in the 60s maybe? There were no geese. According to the book I wrote, I had to take somebody else's word for it. I wasn't taking notes in the 60s or the 70s. What's the temperature? It was 12 when I first checked it. It was probably 13, 14, 15 now. Morning. Morning. That's Celsius, of course. <laughs> Don't know where you are. It'll be 13, 14, 15 Fahrenheit soon enough, but not for two or three months. We're likely to hit that. Two months, mid-October, well, we could totally hit it by then, at least for an overnight low. First frost is probably a month to six weeks away. Could be sooner in a bad turn of weather conditions, but we were married, our, our anniversary is September 27th, and the flowers had been frosted out 
the week before, I remember right. We had lots of leaves on the ground, so we still got pretty wedding pictures out at the West Canada Country Club where our reception was held. But uh, the flowers were gone by then. Ah, yeah. Louisville. I've been to Louisville. We went to university in Arkansas. And we went through Louisville on one of our choir trips. <clears throat> in fact, pretty sure Louisville is where... Now, was it a... I think it was a fellow student. Her parents owned a bookstore. I think that's how that worked. And they gave me my first ever copy of a Writer's Market. I'm pretty sure that was there in Louisville. <clears throat> so I'm very familiar with Southeastern heat having gone to school in Arkansas. Sure, I didn't get down there till late August, but you know, hadn't really cooled off by then. <laughs> and as I've said before, I was in marching band and our marching band only had winter weight black wool uniforms. So, except for the drum corps, for some reason they got like light shirts. But all the rest of us had to wear these black wool uniforms. So, fortunately, we had a very effective air conditioner in our dorm room. And also fortunately, I was taller than my roommate, so I could reach the controls from the floor and he had to stand on something. <laughs> so I always won any battle of the air conditioning settings. That's a gang, gang of old guys. Morning. I say old guys. Some of them are probably younger than me. And all my uh, relatives live in Missouri. And we used to visit them in the dead of summer, so and some of them did not have air conditioning. Central air is a wonderful invention for sure. Yeah, my grandmother, who of course would have been born in the late 19th century, their little house in Butler, Missouri, very old fashioned, had a pot belly stove, no air conditioning. Best you could do was a fan, at least they had fans by the time we were staying with them. She still had a ringer washer, I remember. And uh, for some reason, she liked flannel sheets on her beds. So as an eight-year-old boy, or a 10-year-old boy, sleeping on flannel sheets when it's 90 degrees and 90 degrees humidity as well, or 90% humidity as well. Ah, yes, I remember it well. Here, although it's going to be, well, in Fahrenheit, it'll be about that same temperature, 90. Um, a bit more, actually. 38 Celsius is 100 Fahrenheit, and it's supposed to be 34, 35 over the next couple of days. So a 92-ish. But it's usually dry here. It's rare we get humidity. I'm going to go over on the uh, Pine Island today.
go walk under the waterfall. It's lovely this morning. I did not sleep well under those heat conditions. <laughs> but I survived. Everybody did. Our car didn't have air conditioning back then either. So that was fun. <laughs> Especially going way back. My oldest brother is 11 years older than me, so wasn't too long before he was off and not part of our family trips, but some of the earliest trips I remember would have been all three of us boys in the back seat in an unair conditioned car with me stuck in the middle. Those were the days. can see the little boys that mark the rowing lanes here, the rowing club. There's a floating platform out there for running races. That's downtown, directly that way. And around here is a waterfall that aerates the water for the fish. There's three, four aeration things around the lake. This is the waterfall. Yes, our geese have very little fear of people. <laughs> Always have to be cautious walking under there. It's, it says slippery and they're not... They ain't telling a fib. Lots of gulls too. Oh, there's somebody in a canoe. Or a kayak. I guess that's a kayak. <clears throat> Actually, there's far fewer geese on this island than there are sometimes. Depends on where they are in their breeding cycle, I guess. Most of the little baby geese have grown up now. <clears throat> there's one standing sentry up there. Bridge, carry on around the lake. Here's the kayak. I can see the wake. I think she's gone around the corner. Oh, there she goes. Marina over there will be by there shortly. This is where they were digging up earlier in the year, putting in new irrigation pipes. You can sort of still see the places where the grass hasn't come back.
still seems like most people walk clockwise, I don't know why. Another place where birds congregate on this muddy beach here. Mostly geese and gulls. Usually there's some ducks around too. Don't see any there though. More geese. They do seem to be sort of taking these short flights, like they're practicing for migration. Which may very well be what they do. Those could be young geese who are just trying out their wings. They also start going out into farmers' fields and eating grain. Yeah, I haven't been keeping track of the border situation because I'm walking, uh, not have any plans to go to the States anytime soon. Main reason to go down there has tended to be going to a science fiction convention and those haven't been happening. World Science Fiction Convention's in Washington, D.C., but I'm not going. And it's not till December, which is weird. Currently supposed to go to World Fantasy Convention in Montreal, but that may not happen either for familial reasons. I may need to be at home. And of course, who knows? they'll even go ahead with it or not in person doing a virtual convention this weekend when words collide in Calgary yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be only be good things when words collide is a writing convention not specifically science fiction but uh, you can check it out at whenwordscollide.org. And it's online this year. So you can attend it. See me on my panels. Oh yeah, these jobs like yours? Popular popular parking place <laughs> here by the marina you can see over there is the waterfall we walked under there's a boat ramp up here All right, I can't read the screen at the moment because the sun's on it. Hmm. Well, if you were coming from the south, I would avoid January, February, 
March. <laughs> Winter, in other words. Oh, hello. Who's that? That's love. Hello. Um, autumn is very nice. Before the leaves fall off the trees, so that's sort of September. Or spring, after the leaves arrive, so April, May. Uh, May's June. So June, July, August, September. It can be hot in August. It has been, or July, it has been this year, but it's not always as hot as it was this year. There's the marina. Like the temperature today is absolutely beautiful. And you do get some really gorgeous days in the spring and fall. Crisp, pleasant, depending on your preferred temperature. This is uh, Vagina Rowing Club uses this, and I think you can rent boats here. We'll go down by the water closer. And again, you can see the lanes for the boys that mark the rowing lanes. I mean, if you like the winter, come in the winter. There's always snow in January. Maybe 40 below. Rarely. 30 below for sure. Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius. Well, Fahrenheit too. They get pretty close to that level. Minus 30 Celsius is minus 22 Fahrenheit. Minus 40 Celsius is minus 40 Fahrenheit. That's where the two meet. Come in the fall, you can go to a Saskatchewan Rough Rider football game. That's an experience everybody should have at least once. But yeah, you will start getting frost by late September. So as far as flowers and stuff go, earlier in September is better. A walk around the aeration fountain here. Again, this is to put oxygen in the water of the lake for the fish population. The whole thing was deepened a few years ago because it had silted up over the years. It's an artificial lake created by a dam. And in a few more years, it would have just been a swamp, really. So they dug it out, they emptied it dug it out. It's now nine meters deep at its deepest depth, which means it doesn't freeze solid in the winter like it used to when it was shallower, which means uh, fish can overwinter in it now, which is why we have pelicans. Pelicans require fish. And since they've deepened the lake, we've had pelicans around all the time, which is why earlier I was asking what the collective noun of a pelican is. Apparently it may be pod, a pod of pelicans. So I was told, as I walked. A parliament of pelicans would be good, but they use that for owls, and pelicans are not known for their wisdom, I guess. Not the parliament's known for its wisdom. <laughs> so <laughs> calling it a parliament of owls is actually an insult. <laughs> Maybe it's a parliament of ravens. It's a murder of crows. No, I'm sh pretty sure it's a parliament of owls. All right. Now we're on the east side of the lake, heading north. <clears throat> Over there is uh, the Queen building, HMCS Queen. It's where the naval cadets hang out, so it's run like a ship. Of 
course, HMCS stands for Her Majesty's Canadian Ship. And it has a kind of a ship mast there that the flags hang on rather than a regular flagpole. That's where the naval cadets here in Regina train. Over there's the Albert Street Bridge, all lit up in the sun. And of course, more geese. Morning. Geese down there. Over there is Willow Island. All the islands are artificial too. Um, Willow Island is where they set off fireworks when we have Canada Day fireworks and that sort of thing. So we usually stand on the bridge over there to watch them. You see them out over the water. It's very nice. The geese don't like it. <laughs> the dogs don't like it. Our cat's not a huge fan either, but people like fireworks. My current novel has, as I mentioned earlier, an AI uplifted wisecracking cat as one of its main characters. And each chapter starts with a bit of cat wisdom from this hyper-intelligent cat's viewpoint. And one of his comments is, humans are way too fond of loud noises. Cats would ban them if they could. Dogs probably feel the same way. It's always these benches so you can sit. And, oh, there's the uh, people I saw earlier on there. Whatever you call those. That might be my thumbnail. When this goes on YouTube, I usually pull an interesting image out of the file to use as the thumbnail, because YouTube picks stupid things. Parked cars. He loves parked cars. You also see the landing over there for Willow Island. You can actually rent it and have picnics over there. For a walk tomorrow, maybe Harbor Landing. I've only been out there once and it was kind of cool. It's a new development, but it has a natural creek flowing through it with paths on either side. So this is where this lookout here, if you were going to go to Willow Island, there's stairs down the other side that takes you to a boat landing. You can see there's some, there's a landing over there and some shelters visible through the tree. I could do a panorama up here. Especially on a day like today when it's so pretty. And of course, right there is where my young adult fantasy series, The Shards of Excalibur, begins. As we walk around there, I will tell you about it. You may have heard me tell about it before, but you may not have. Um, so in the Shards of Excalibur, my main character, Arianne Forsyth, 
living with her aunt after a series of foster homes. Her mother disappeared under mysterious circumstances. She gets suspended from school for fighting. It wasn't really her fault. She fought back, but she got suspended. And then uh, she's out one morning when, after she's suspended because she doesn't want to tell her aunt. And she ends up down here on a foggy morning. You can't really see across the lake or even to the island there. She hears singing in the water. And she uh, sees this staircase leading down into the water, which she follows. And it goes deeper than the lake is into a chamber. There's this woman made of water who tells her, the woman made of water is says that she's the Lady of the Lake, tells Arianne that she's the heir to the power of the Lady of the Lake from King Arthur, and uh, she needs to find the scattered shards of Excalibur, Arthur's sword, before Merlin can. Merlin is still alive and active in the world, and if he gets the sword and reforges it, he will use it to take over the world, and because it has the kind of power that could allow him to do that, and then to invade his own world of fairy, where she is. So that's the setup. There's a boy that happens along at the same time, Wally Knight. He ends up down there with her. The two of them get set on this quest, which plays out over the five books. It's called The Shards of Excalibur. It has its own website, shardsofexcalibur.com. And of course, I talk about it on mine too. And it's out in brand new editions on Amazon. Print, ebook, and audiobook, all three available for all five books now. I need to uh, set up the new print editions for Ingram Spark, which will then allow any bookstore to order it. But at the moment, it's only the print's only available through Amazon. And the ebook is Amazon only for now. <clears throat> I'm planning, planning a relaunch of the whole series now that it's all set up. I just need to find time. So I have the anthology to edit, and my novel to finish, and a short story to write. And all of that is higher priority since the, nobody's expecting the relaunch, so it can just wait. The college building over there. That's where the Conservatory of Performing Arts is, among other things. Building a new swimming pool over there. You sort of see some of the construction stuff going on. They tore out the old one, building a brand new one with water slide and all that fun stuff. Let's get more over there. Now we come back down to the lake, see the legislative building from over here. There's an airplane taking off over there. The airport is not too far down that way, down that way. There's a duck. The only duck I've seen, it's all been geese and gulls today. There's the other aeration fountain. On a windy day, you get wet walking along the path, but it doesn't look like I'll have to worry about that today. Of course, there's these everywhere showing you where you are.
We tore up the playground too, I guess, where we used to take Alice all the time. It was right up there, now it's behind the construction fence. So. I mean, if they tore it out or it's just inaccessible because of the construction, that might be it. Did still see the shelter there. Oh, here, let's take a little walk up to the gazebo. I performed up here years ago with the group I was in, and I was at a wedding here. I'd say the playground is gone. All the equipment is gone. It was right there behind that fence. Main reason I came up here. There's usually flowers in there, but it's all not being done this time around. So I don't know when this gazebo was built, but I'd say it goes back quite a while. It's a nice space for, you know, doing a concert or something, and I think there's power to it. There must have been, because we had microphones and stuff. There's clearly power. Well, it has lights in it, so yeah, there's power. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll walk through the grass just since I came up this way, just to be different. So we'll leave the lake behind. Walk through the park, oof, here. Don't fall in the holes around the trees there. There's a oh you always have to oh that's, there's this sculpture over here I haven't looked at for a while. No, I'm getting my feet wet. They must have been watering down here. Oh well, won't kill me. It's kind of cool, especially this time of the morning when the sun li lights it up. called the Honoring Tree, uh, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the 1910 settlement of people of African ancestry to Regina, Saskatchewan. There you go. I've only walked over here once, I think, to look at it. One reason is the grass is often wet like it is today if they've been watering. Or if the sprinklers are going and you have to dodge around them. Ooh. And the ground is uneven, that too. And then we come to Speaker's Corner, which has the uh, lamps that once were in Hyde Park in London, where the, real, where the original Speaker's Corner is. I'm not sure where these pieces of uh, decoration, where they came from originally, but anyway, there's the one of the lanterns from Hyde Park. We'll go back through the tunnel so I don't have to stop traffic.
last look at the bridge. And back through the murals. Almost home, as you will know if you've walked with me before. I said we watched uh, My Fair Lady on Netflix. There's a restored version of it on Netflix the other night. And of course, there's two songs that the titles at least work very well for me. And one of them is for these walks, as I have often walked down this street before, but the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. All at once am I several stories high, knowing I'm on the street where you live. Except in these walks it would end up with knowing I'm on the street where I live. Not there yet. Two more streets. And the other song is words, words, words. I'm so sick of words. I get words all day through, first from him, then from you. Is that all you blighters can do? And sometimes I get sick of words, being a writer and editor. There's a song for everything. Or at least a phrase of a song. Not all for My Fair Lady. I know a lot of musicals. Watched Oliver again for the first time in years. I always liked that one because Mark Lester, who plays Oliver, was like just one year older than me, so I identified with the kid. When I first saw it, I was his age. I guess I'm still his age. He's not an actor anymore. He went into something else, some medical thing. I think the last time he did a film was when he was about 18. But he did several as a kid. I used to always look for movies with Mark Lester in them because I identified with him. All right, Roger, I'm full of song references. Because that's another song that applies. I hear music when there's no one there. Well, check out My Fair Lady on Netflix. Watch the whole thing. It's a great movie. Audrey Hepburn doesn't do her own singing, but other than that. Of course, it should have been Julie Andrews who did it on Broadway. I would have loved to have seen that movie with Julie Andrews playing Liza Doolittle. But you can't complain about Audrey Hepburn. Having school dead ahead, almost home. Alrighty, we'll stop here. So, thanks for walking with me. 
one hour on the nose pretty much. I'll be back tomorrow and I'm thinking maybe harbor landing. We'll see. I haven't decided for sure. Bye for now.